So tonight's topic, we're going to discuss um, basically what, what the coronavirus does to your body. We're going to simplify it. I'm going to make up a little short story like we're children. Because <laughs> uh, for me, growing up, whenever there was some sort of illness, I would find a way to simplify it and, and kind of make it out like little fun things so that it made more sense to me. So that's, that's one way that I tend to deal with, um, sorry, my computer doesn't want to work well with me today. Um, so those are ways that I would, okay. Um, okay. I'm just going to mute this. We don't hear. It. Okay. So for me, when I was a kid growing up, uh, I used to find ways to simplify things so that I could understand it. And, um, you know, that's something that I do now as an adult as well. And I, and I feel that it, it kind of, it helps me, uh, puts me at peace. When I was, when I was a kid, my doc, I, I should say my doctor started that because, um, he used to make up little stories when I would go get a shot or, I was sick, what was going on in my body. So it was, it was always fun and interesting. So I wasn't as scared as a kid. So today we're going to talk about, um, the coronavirus, COVID-19, something that you've all heard so much about and probably seen so much on the news and everywhere else. Um, it's getting a little saturated. So we're going to talk about it in a different way. We're going to kind of talk about what the virus actually is and then what it does to your body. So in a simplified way that you kind of understand that makes it a little bit easier as to why people are getting the symptoms they're getting and, and, and feeling as ill as they are. So one of the things that you probably have all, well, you all know about, you know, covering your mouth, covering your nose, um, washing your hands, keeping your hands clean. And the reason why is not because the virus gets absorbed in through your skin. It's because you touch your face all the time and you, the virus has a goal of wanting to get down into your lungs. It's a respiratory virus. And, and it, that's, that's, think of it as like a little guy on a mission. Okay. And that's, so he goes from your hands and when you touch your face, he's going up your nose into your mouth, um, and finding its way to the back of your throat. So you have all seen photos of the virus or a little round sphere with these little things. We're going to use some props. <laughs> a little massage ball. So we're going to, this is going to be our coronavirus today. So the, the virus has these little spiky things or they're like little, you know, some pictures, they look like little pieces of broccoli to me, but it's a round sphere and it basically has these little things that come off of it. Okay. So this is our, this is our virus. And basically it wants to its job is to get to your cells and take them over, take control over them and tell the, tell the cells what they need to do and how, and that they need to create more bad cells. So by doing this, it starts on your hands by touching things, getting into your mouth, getting into your nose. You may have heard or read that, um, drinking, drinking, um, you know, they, I think the CDC said, take a sip of water every 15 minutes. It keeps your mouth moist and keeps things moving, flowing so that basically it's not necessarily a prevention, but it is a way to keep your mouth healthy. So moisture, um, it keeps the skin healthy. So when you have a, a very dry mouth, um, these little thingies can attach well, before I hit myself in the head can attach that much easier. So by having a moist mouth, they, they're, they may be sliding around, so they don't attach as easily. So that's one of the very small percentage ways of, of why they're saying to, to drink a lot, to, um, help with, you know, that the, why the moisture helps. Um, it does not kill the virus. It does not, um, you know, there are rumors that it like washes it away and, and things like that. So the virus is actually not even a living thing. Um, it's, it's not, you know, it, it needs your body as a host to replicate itself. So it needs a living thing, which is you 
to create more having some water now good every 15 minutes everybody take a quick sip um so it 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 needs you to do the damage okay so this little guy is just going to kind of make its way in and what it wants to do is it starts in the back of your throat and that's why some people are feeling you know a, a sore throat and these little things on our fake virus here attach to your cells almost as if it was like a key okay so your cells have an outer layer that protect itself because your body is always looking to protect itself and then these little you know pointy thingies will penetrate that and and because they have the same they have the the um the makeup the the Basically, we'll say it's like a key, so it almost has like the key, so that your body, when it when it attaches to that cell, your body thinks that it's another human healthy cell. So it's it's false. So it's you know it's kind of like you know it was hacked in a way. So then, <laughs> once this little guy attaches to your cell and then gets in, it takes over that cell and decides like, haha, you know, now I own you and I'm going to. You're going to do whatever I want. So now you have this healthy cell and this is kind of attaching and taking over. And it's kind of telling your cell, like, I'm, you're, you know, I, you're going to do what I want. So the cell makes proteins and this little guy is going to tell the cell to create, sorry, we had a little, um, to, to create more bad cells, right? So as this little cell is now, this guy is telling the cell to create more bad cells to spread throughout your body. And as it's doing that, it's actually um, killing off that healthy cell. But the cell doesn't know that it's doing anything wrong because it thinks that this is another human cell kind of telling it like, hey, so it's, you know, just doing its job and doing what it's told. And this little guy is his boss. But doesn't know that this is the bad boss and it's telling it to make bad replicate itself in, in a bad way. So it, um, basically once that one cell dies, it moves on to the next cell. But in the meantime, it's, it's kind of throwing other protein, like a little cells throughout your body that are also attaching to more cells. So now this is kind of saying, Hey, cell make more of me, little babies of me. So it's making little baby balls and then it's kind of bouncing and and eventually works its way down your throat into your airway which is what it wants to do um into your lung which is that's you know that's where it wants to be that's where it wants to take over does chewing gum help i don't think that chewing gum that helps with secretion of your saliva so it does help with some of the moisture i don't think it has anything to do with the with the with the um the uh, coronavirus though um, so basically um, what generally happens is your immune system after a few days of this little guy invading the cells your immune system realizes that there's a foreign body and it goes to attack it and you know the symptoms that people are feeling it's because their immune system is doing its job so when people are feeling symptoms and they're getting fevers and they're getting weak and they're getting sore and tired those are actually good things because it's saying that your body is fighting for itself your immune system is active it's actively working you get a fever because it wants to make your body inhabitable for this host it wants this ball and its little friends out so by turning up the heat that thinks it's going to say get out of here you know we don't want you here but it's a little this is a little bit smarter than that so the fever is not necessarily um causing it but that's your immune system that's its response that's what it's supposed to do so uh you'll you'll your bones will feel very weak your bones make white blood cells so white blood cells are basically what your body needs to fight the viruses in um so look at them like they're, they're your little soldiers and they're going in and they're fighting so by having things like vitamin c and zinc and and nutrients those are like the little weapons for your your soldiers you know it's helping boost your immune system it's making it stronger it's making it more powerful 
So this is why, you know, they, they're, they're giving people large doses of vitamin C, you know, through an IV and they're telling people boost your immune health so that when this little guy does attack, your immune system will kick in and it will just be like full force, boom, and not let this little guy get to the point that is, you know, going to cause some severe, um, complications with your lungs. So that's why boosting your immune system is such an important part of prevention. It's really the only thing that you can do aside from staying home and, and, um, being safe. So the problem is for those that, um, and that's the other thing, like people are tired, you know, like I had someone tell me that they're husband was very tired all the time and he just wanted to sleep and he's got symptoms and I'm like, let him sleep because when your body needs to, when you're using, when, when your body is fighting something, okay, think of it like a little, your little army. So your white blood cells are going in, they're fighting all these cells. If they're, if they need to be doing other things, they're not fully focused on the fight and they're not going to win the fight. So by you sleeping allows your body to use all its resources to give to your, um, to give to your, um, immune system to help it fight. So you want to, you, you want to sleep, you want to let it, um, you want to sleep and you want to let your body fight and do what it needs to do. So those are, those are good things. That means your body's fighting. You want your body to fight. The problem with those that have a weakened immune system and the ones with severe cases, your white blood cells activate, they go into like an over, an overdrive, right? So they become overactive and they then cause chemicals, um, you know, they, they, they activate chemicals in your body in response because they're, they're weak. So they're it's kind of like um, they're overdoing it and the the chemicals are leaking fluid into the lungs. So you may have heard people where they're saying their lungs are, you know, they have fluid of like 25% or 50%. And that's where, that's where the problems are coming in because the fluid leaking into the lungs, along with this little guy who's now made it down into the lungs, destroying cells and, and making, you know, having the cells that they took over create new bad ones. So they're, they're kind of destroying things in there. Um, it decreases the transportation of oxygen. So your body's not, you know, getting the oxygen, you know, in the blood and, and, and eventually that leads to organ failure and suffocation because someone, um, they're not getting oxygen to the brain and to, to all the major parts of your body. The bigger issue, which is, what majority of the patients that have a weak immune system are actually passing from are complications of the virus. So people are not, um, so people are dying more of the complications. Like the virus itself isn't killing the people. When you have a Im weak immune system and your immune system is focused on, on this little guy and getting rid of him and all his friends, it allows, um, other viruses and other bacteria to attack. And if your immune system that's already weak and you you have a little old weak army that's fighting for you now has to fight all these other bacteria and viruses, they're not going to be able to fight everybody. They're just not strong enough. So then what you have, you know, is unfortunately somebody who, who passes from, from complications. So the, the, so these are some of the, you know, hopefully my little story is, is helping you with my props explaining it. So please feel free to ask questions. I'm not speaking in technical terms because that will just put you all to sleep. And Terry's going to be doing that at, uh, you know, nine o'clock Eastern, 6 PM. What are you Pacific? He's going to be doing a meditation session. So I'll post the link on my on page if anybody's interested in doing that to relax after this live if I haven't stressed you out enough. Um, but so basically like one of the drugs that people are getting all upset, all, all excited about is the chloroquine or the hydrochloroquine. So, but the chloroquine part of that basically reduces the pH levels of the cells, which slows down the replication of, you know, the, 
So it's slowing down. So when this guy goes in and gets to the cells, it's slowing down the pH level so that this guy, it's just, it's slow in producing more of him, of him, you know, and re reproducing more of himself, like in the, taking it over and then creating more, like I said in the beginning. It's slowing down the process so that your immune system kicks in sooner and can fight it more fight it at the at the beginning stages and has a better chance so that's one of the reasons why that drug is, is effective um, but not everybody's eligible to get that drug so there are there are always downsides to everything there's you know people are like oh I need this drug I need that drug and 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 they're seeing things on the news or they're reading things but you're you know the pulmonologists and the doctors that are evaluating on a patient by patient basis are the best ones to advise you you know, that drug that they're giving to the, the malaria for malaria causes a lot of, of um, heart issues. So if you're a cardiac patient, that that drug may not be for you because it can cause heart damage. And, you know, so they weigh the pros and the cons. If it's life saving at the moment, but you might have a heart issue for the rest of your life, you they may do it. But if it's going to cause you to have, you know, a heart attack, well, then they're not going to... Um, give you that drug. So people are like fighting you know, with healthcare workers and it's good to ask the questions and be educated and know what some of the, what some of the, um, current, uh, drugs that are on the market that they're using. There, there are some clinical trials. I know there's one for, what is it? Res, res, remeds, remeds fear, whatever it is. I don't know. I'm trying to read it on the screen over there. So, um, but that's another clinical drug that they're in like third phase of, of trials. But again, it's, it's, they, you know, talk to your doctors, ask them questions, ask them, you know, how, you know, there are people that I know that have gotten sick and have recovered and have been told that they're going to have permanent lung damage, you know, once all this is said and done, once they fully heal, they will have permanent lung damage because the cells got down there and they were cre they were killing off I'm not cells. These little viruses got down there and they were killing off cells. So they're, you know, they can get permanent lung damage from that. Um so then that's what goes on in your body. That's what goes on with these little guys and how they attach and they stick to you and basically it's it's like a little hack. They're hacking into your cells and they're they're creating their own um, hopefully, hopefully my little thing was enjoyable. So then the question becomes mask or no mask, right? So you see people that are making masks, they're giving them to the hospitals, they're making masks, they're giving them to other people. Then you see the crazy people who are just putting like plastic bags over their head and just, uh, I've seen bottle containers on people's heads, like the big five gallon jugs. So if we go if we go back to the beginning and what I said, how this virus is getting in, it's through your nose and your mouth. And, you know, aside from your hands touching your nose and your mouth, you breathe. You're breathing the air around you. And the way that this virus is spread is through the moisture in your mouth and your nose, through your respiratory system. Your airway is moist and comes out through your mouth and there's moisture in there. Majority of the viruses are there. It's a very heavy virus. They did say that. So the majority are falling to surfaces, but there is still a decent amount that's lingering within the air. And they're saying it's living within the air like two to three hours, you know, in a concentrated area, um, which is where the six feet social distancing rule comes into play. So with the masks, um, people are looking for N95 masks people are selling fake N95 masks online, you want to make sure that they're actual certified N95 masks if that's what you're going to go for. But to be honest, you know, people that are on the front lines, the ones in the hospitals should be the ones that are really getting those. So, you know, if so long as you're staying in your home, you don't need an N95 mask. You're just being exposed to your immediate surroundings. Um, for surgical masks or at-home masks, those masks are preventative from... Now, I've seen some posts where people are saying surgical masks are as good as an N95 mask, and that is not true, not at all. 
So the 95 in N95 means that it is like a 95 percentile of, you know, that your the airway is you're you're getting maybe only five percent of the air from the outside. So it reduces your chances significantly. Okay, it's not even 100 percent. And N95 masks have a very tight seal around your nose and your mouth. And many health professionals actually have to get fitted for um, these masks. So educating yourself a little bit on the different types of masks is something that, you know, can help you in the long run and also help you from being scammed online because there are a ton of, of, of scammers online. And people making home masks. Uh, I should have had mine. It's over there. But I made my own. I used uh, a pair of, of pants, stretch pants. I cut the bottom off and put two holes on the sides and then literally did it across my, to my ears. The purpose of those masks, um, the, the purpose of those masks is that it's just to prevent you from sharing your germs with other people. So if you are infected and you don't know it, you, the moisture is being is, is going through the mask, but you need to make sure that the inside of the homemade masks has some sort of 100% cotton lining. If it's just a pair of like your stretch pants or, you know, a sweater, that's, I mean, they're, they're, they're holy. That's, I mean, that's like very ventilated. The air and germs are going to go right through that. Um, tight weaving, 100% cotton. I'm sure that every single person has um, an old t-shirt that they could cut up to put as a liner inside of a mask. Um, whether you're making, we're using like your pants. I've seen people, you know, making it out of socks. There's so many creative ways to make your own at home mask. And it's a great idea for everybody to wear it so that prevention, you're not giving your germs to other people. If everybody wore their own mask. Think of how, you know, no one would be, would be giving their germs out. So, or it would be reduced significantly. So it's, it's not a bad thing, but know that it is not, it is not protecting you unless it is a, you know, a medical mask with, or an N95 or certified mask that is saying that it's, you know, there for your protection. Um, a lot of these, you know, it's just unfortunate that so many people are, are, scamming and I see it and I just and I just keep commenting on people with with information and please don't purchase this this is not legit um and uh but you can you can use a mask but it's it's only going to prevent you from from spreading so when you go to the store wear the mask absolutely wear a mask get some socks get some pants make sure there's something that has 100% cotton lined inside to prevent and you don't need the whole thing to be cotton but basically just enough for that to cover this area um, so that it's, so that your moisture is going through it and filtering through and it'll absorb, uh, if, as long as it's tight cotton, it will absorb the moisture. And that's, you know, that's the, that's really the whole point of it. So if everybody wore them, they'd be less worry about spreading it. Um, so I think, yes, absolutely wear a mask, but just, just, uh, and if anybody wants any, any idea, any, to know how to make them or how I made mine for me and my family. Um, I, I actually told my nieces and nephews, I said, um, you know, I have little Easter bags for them all with candy. I buy them every year. And, um, I bought it all before this started back in the beginning of March. And I've been tempting, put really doing my best not to, to dip into the candy bags, but I told them all that, uh, that, you know, I'm making them masks and putting it in with their candy and they were laughing. But, you know, it's because I'm like, just if they go outside there, you know, just put it on. You know, if somebody in the house isn't feeling well, everybody put it on. Make sure that there's there's uh, no concern or spreading. So um, that is my little spiel about, you know, what the virus is and what it does to you and um, basically what why people are getting sick and and just know that when somebody is not showing symptoms, it, it, the symptoms come from when your immune system is fighting. If they're not showing symptoms and then they suddenly just can't breathe. That's, um, you know, that, that's, that's a weaker immune system. And, and, and that's, um, so you want to boost your immune system. And if somebody is tired of sleeping, let them sleep. It's like a, it's a huge plus. 
So I hope that um, this was informative and it was somewhat entertaining. Um, and if nobody has any questions or comments, I will uh, say a farewell. Um, Mara has a shipment of masks coming that are being distributed throughout Canada, Texas, and more. So uh, a friend of ours, um, thanks Christine, is is uh, a friend of ours from Canada is, um, I guess, has a shipment of masks that um, he's sending. That's awesome. That's awesome. And when people are donating, uh, you know, you know, I, my company donated a ton of masks that they had. Um, and it's just, it's important. Let, let the medical personnel who are on the, who have the biggest, you know, the biggest risk of all, let them get the, the N95 masks because they're the ones that need it. Um, you can stay at home and, and be safe. I mean, go, I mean, go outside on your porch and get some air, but just for the most part, stay at home, be safe. And if you do go to the store, wear one of those cotton masks. If we all do, it'll be great. So thank you all for joining me. And I will post a link for anybody that's interested in uh, the meditation session that's going to be starting in, I don't even know what time it is. Oh, it should be starting in a few minutes uh, or now. So Christine, can you post, can you post the, um, the link for Terry's meditation on here and then I'm going to jump off so people can go and be part of that. Um, and have a, have a good night all. Take care. Bye.